the magic isle of the Caribbean. Of this, our people are proud, but prouder still of their independence as the Black Republic since our emancipation from slavery in 1804. We share this island with another nation, the Dominican Republic. We have named our part Haiti, meaning mountainous land. Creole, we believe, is more than the language. Its very liveliness expresses our love of freedom and our zest for life. French is Haiti's official language, although most of the people here speak only Creole. Marie, the peasant woman, makes good use of her tongue to defend her privilege of going to market. Through its songs and many of its customs, the memory of our people goes back to far away Africa, from whose shores our fathers were brought to become slaves on sugar plantations. But we are free now. And even if we tread many paths, we are able to call these ways our own and to build our own future patiently. We are four million people on a crowded land, but there is always some place to go and many excuses to travel. Marie carries down to the city the vegetables and fruit that grow on their plot of earth. She dreams of the bright cloth she will buy for a new dress. Others rush down to market with fresh coffee beans or charcoal from the hard woods of the mountains. We are rich only in those things which grow from the earth. They are sometimes plentiful and sometimes not. But we are used to sharing what we have. It is always a gay journey, as long as there is someone to greet and talk to, especially when we stop to freshen up our vegetables at the village pump. Somewhere on the way, there is bound to be a wedding. We do not feel that music or dancing are interruptions in our work. There is always a drum calling somewhere. It makes pleasure more real and work easier. A favorite on festive days is the contredance, a parody of the minuet which our French masters tried to teach us in the old colonial days. Boom! 
mountains as Mary or from the plains, we do not come to the city as strangers. The city is ours too, and we are everywhere in it. It is good to see how rich it has grown from the burnt fields and the scorched earth of our battles for freedom. Surely, in the whole world, there is no prettier suburb than the one in the hills, leading down to Port-au-Prince, our metropolis. The market is the center of our lives and marketing is our passion. When we have sold our vegetables or counted out our beans or peas by the dozen to a stingy buyer, we go in search of a kettle or pot imported from far away or a printed piece of cotton from our own meals. But the fun is in the bargaining. We are patient, but our patience is not an empty thing. It gives meaning and rhythm even to monotonous gestures. Thus, the hands of the craftsman will polish the hardness of mahogany until it is as smooth to touch as the cheek of a young girl. So, our markets are filled with the fruit of our land and the products of our handicraft. If we are ever to afford more of these things for ourselves, we must open our markets to the world. is working hard at developing its foreign trade. Canada is a respected customer. It is separated from IT by only nine flying hours and is easily accessible by sea. We now exchange our sisal, coffee and handicrafts for Canadian flour, fish and machinery. 
Growing cultural links between our French-speaking island and Canada help point the way to closer trade relations. One of our main exports, along with sugar and coffee, is sisal, raw or processed. The tough, wide fiber of the sisal plant will be woven into rope, twine or mats colorfully dyed. We are proud of the high quality of our sisal and its importance on the world market. We are thankful for an industry that employs thousands of our people on vast plantations. To a country tortured by erosion and drought, sisal is a blessing. It turns deserts into productive plains. But progress must go hand in hand with education. In our fight against illiteracy, we are helped by international organizations and assisted by several hundred nuns and brothers from Canada. To learn new ways, a great number of young people study abroad, many of them in the colleges and technical schools of French Canada. We have opened our cities and the beauties of our land to visitors. We are travelers ourselves and feel at home in Paris or Montreal. But we return to discover the quaintness of our towns, the excitement of our markets, and the elegant life of our elite. <laughs> If people are first attracted to our island by its more primitive customs, we are not shocked. Their invitation is to the goodness of our Caribbean sun, to the hotels we have built for them, and to the pleasure of our French and Haitian food. We are happy that they come and remain. We are happy that in 10 years we have built a tourist industry that brings 60,000 visitors to our country. Each year we are fighting to free our land from erosion and seasonal floods. The boldest of our efforts is a $40 million dam and irrigation project in the rich Artibonit Valley. Waters rushing down from unforested mountains will be stored and fed to thousands of acres of land. The fat flesh of our mountains has been washed away. Mostly, there is nothing left but naked slopes. But now, the valleys below are bursting with hope. Water is no more an enemy. It is obedient and flows where it is needed. The valley's new responsibility is to provide food and more and more of it for a people growing so fast in numbers that no one is able to keep count. The experts who subdue the waters have also taught the peasants the secret of new crops and new ways to grow them. Thus, foreign aid is helping to bring food to the hungry. The greatest of our new cultures is rice. The spirit 
of the new cooperative ways is not new to us. From ancient tradition, we have chosen to work together, linked by the pulse of our drums and the beat of our dances. This fashion of work we call a kumbit, and many dances of our folklore express the joy of shared tasks and the fine making that follows the harvest. and most hopeful projects is a copper mine developed by Consolidated Hollywell of Canada. In a matter of months, some Canadian experts have turned a mountain top in the heart of our land into a busy mining site. As hundreds of our people are called into the industrial age, they bring with them their old traditions of work. The song and a few improvised instruments lend the rhythm and mood of the combat to their level.
Many of our writers and artists are rediscovering the value of our folklore. Some playwrights are even writing in Creole, for only Creole can capture much that is intimate in our people. Playwrights such as Maurice Leroy turn for inspiration to the hopes and miseries of the common people blending their daily lives and simple faith into plays fashioned on the great tragedies. Ancient mythology is reborn in the form of the people's voodoo gods. The author explores the feelings of our peasant folk toward endless toil and misfortune and exploits dramatically the ritual of mourning or rejoicing. In this play, Rara, a young man, debates whether he should lead once again his traditional band of merrymakers during the Mardi Gras carnival, even under the threat of death from the authorities who have forbidden celebrations. He chooses liberty and death. <laughs> But not all dancing in Haiti is based on all rituals. In our nightclubs and private houses, the modern temples of the Western world have become a part of our way of life. Voodoo. Even today, many of our people cling to the ancient African cult. In times of trial or anxiety, they sometimes will submit to the intricate ritual of symbols and dances designed to summon one of their gods. Led by their priest, the Honga, the faithful try to reach a state of intimate communication with the spirit of their choosing. He is called upon to possess them, to speak through their mouth and make known his wishes and desires. In this way, they feel he grants them his control over the forces of nature.
as for most of our people, life is as simple as eating, breathing, and dying. She seldom ponders the conflict between the old and the new. For her, it is enough to hope that the new dams, the mines, and the rice fields will one day help to bring a more abundant life to her children. And when that day comes, Haiti will be truly the magic isle of the Caribbean. <laughs>